Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let's try this. A reading 
from 1 Kings, listen for the word of the Lord. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks to pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu son of Nimshi as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha son of Shaphat of Abel Maloah as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. All throughout August, um, for our children's um, message, we're going to focus on generosity and encourage you to talk with your the people in your household, um, people you connect with about how you can practice um, being generous and then actually doing that. This week also we had a great generous response on behalf of adults, parents, and uh, volunteers who helped us provide a Zoom VBS experience. So in just a minute, we are going to um, invite you to watch one of our videos from The Wilderness Escape. We heard this week in VBS about how God is with us, how God provides for us, and how God will guide us. These are all such key messages. And we have, are the recipients of these. And then guess what? We get to share that good news um, with others. And sometimes the way that God is with us is the way we're with each other. And the ways that God provides are often the provisions we share with one another. And the way that God guides us when we together discern God's will and God's direction um, for our lives. So our closing prayer will um, be also this song, this video that's next. I hope you enjoy it. We sure had a lot of fun um, singing and doing crafts and um, experience um, experiencing Vacation Bible School in a new and a different way. And I'm so grateful for the generous and hard work of the many volunteers and parents who helped make it happen. So I invite you to enjoy this video and let it be our prayer for this night.
prepare to hear your hearts to hear the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he dis while he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May God's grace, peace, and compassion Fill your hearts and minds. Peter walked on water. Did you hear it? Peter walked on water. Jesus bid him come when Peter wondered, was this a ghost or really Jesus? And Jesus bid him to come out on the water, and Peter walked on the water. Now, had our gospel reading ended at verse 30, that's what we might have focused on, but we know the rest of the story, that he moves his eyes from Jesus, he sees the sea around him, and he starts to sink. I lived. I had to remember that when I was eight years old. I had a near-death experience of sorts. I was in the ocean. I thought of this story from my childhood this week when we read of Jesus bidding Peter come walk on the water. I grew up in Southern California, as some of you know, and trips to the beach were a regular occurrence. And I loved to swim. My mother tells the story of how I was the four-year-old who at swim lessons, when they were gonna teach us to jump off the high dive, raised my hand first. She was terrified, but I wasn't. I loved the water. I was a strong swimmer. We had a swimming pool at our home. So when on that particular summer day, we were way far out in the ocean, I wasn't afraid. I knew how to swim. What I had not accounted for was that, that there was someone further out than I. And when a big wave came, it pushed that person directly on top of me, and I couldn't get up. I was an eight-year-old, and this person seemed huge. I don't know what size they really were, but when I struggled to come up after having ridden this wave, it wasn't the ocean only above me. It was somebody else's body. I don't know if they felt me, but I remember how it went black. I lost my breath. I did come up. Obviously, I lived. I was terrified. I told my dad about it. And I'm so grateful that he too, a strong swimmer who was out there with me, insisted we go back in the ocean. I've swam in the ocean many, many, many times since then. And every so often, that time in which it felt like I was close to drowning, I remember. But I lived. And I'm so grateful that my dad helped that not be the end of my time of swimming in the ocean or feeling comfortable or confident in the waves. 
And here's a second story. It's a mountaintop story we hear in First Kings of Elijah. He's waiting for the Lord to appear to him. And he's in the mountains. And first, there's a strong wind. And then an earthquake. Oh my gosh, where is God present? In the sheer silence. Just shy of age 40, I ran long distance with a group of runners. And that particular summer in our running group, there was a small group, four of us. Well, I became the fourth person, but they were gonna hike Long's Peak. Now, let's just be clear. I didn't own my own hiking boots and I'm afraid of heights, but they convinced me that I would be fine because we had run marathons together and anyone who could run a marathon could certainly hike Long's Peak. Well, if you know anything about Long's Peak, it's actually just shy of a technical climb. You don't need to have ropes. But as you get towards the summit of Long's Peak, it's hand over foot, hand over foot. It's steep. Jenny, who was also with us that day, is terrified of lightning. But the four of us, we were ready. I didn't ask many questions, which was probably my first mistake. And as I said, I also didn't own hiking boots, probably another mistake. And we had gotten late in our start. So already as we crossed the boulder field, there were people who were already descending. There's only a short window of time in which it's actually safe to peak Long's Peak because of lightning. And we were on the very edge of it. And I had slowed us down because there is on the backside of that trail, it's a sheer drop off. The trail isn't wide, maybe two feet. So when you had those other people who were already descending, you pulled yourself to one side or the other. My heart can still race thinking of that. But we made it to the peak. It was exhilarating. But now that hand over foot climb up, we needed to do backwards. And once again, I really had slowed us down. And Jenny, who was with us terrified of lightning, knew that now the lightning was coming and we were already way above tree line. So she and one of my other friends, they descended much more quickly and we decided to separate. So two, Mitch stayed with me and Jenny, and I can't even remember her name, um, went down beyond and we're gonna wait for us once we were, they were below tree level. <sighs> well, as often happens when you're afraid and panicked, we missed the marks on the trail. So when we were descending to what we thought was the keyhole to get through to the other side, from the backside of the mountain over to the boulder field, it was the false keyhole and lightning was there. I was afraid. I started to wonder, would I make it to the other side? The road, the, the, the path is narrow. There's lightning. It doesn't make sense to stop. There's rain. It's slippery. The path is narrow. Step by step, catching my breath similar to when I think of that near drowning experience. This time, as an almost 40 year old, I had more awareness of the fragility of life, but also the power of prayer. So as we made the very slow return from the false keyhole to the correct keyhole, then across an open area, even as there was lightning around us, in between breaths, there were prayers and a certain sense of surrender. But I'm here. I lived. Even as fearful and true as it seemed that I might not, I'm here. And Peter, he walked on water. I've shared that story of hiking Long's Peak many times. And depending on where I put the emphasis in the story on my own maybe lack of asking questions or really not any experience or my fear of heights, 
that story can be understood in many ways. But this week, to this familiar story of Jesus calling Peter out onto the water, I want to invite you to remember this. Peter did walk on water. This week, I've been reflecting that part of the invitation in this gospel reading to us is to be people who also walk on water. People who remember their own stories and how God was with them, whether as an eight-year-old I was aware of it or not, clearly acutely aware at age 40. God is with us. God guides us. And indeed, there are some people who in the ocean drown and on Long's Peak fall. God is with them also. But our part, our part is with Peter. To listen when Jesus bids us come, to follow. This week, we had three Old Testament lessons that we listened to in Vacation Bible School. The escape through the Red Sea of the Israelites from Egyptian captivity. Being fed manna in the morning and quail at night during the 40 years in the wilderness. And the giving of the Ten Commandments to Moses on the mountaintop. So there was sea and there was mountains. And there's many ways when we come to those, our sacred stories too, that we might hear them and we might explore through them. But the Israelites were freed from captivity. The people grumbling and crying and complaining in the wilderness were fed. And Moses, who once broke the tablets, did bring others down. And the people received the Ten Commandments, the gift of the law from God to them. The story finishes with the connection with God. There's so many uncertainties right now. So many challenges. This is what I want to invite you into. I want you to remember those times that God indeed has brought you through difficulties and trials and challenges. And then I want you to consider this. This week in my prayer and meditation and study and reflection, I wondered what it would have been like if when Peter asked if indeed this was Jesus and Jesus called to him he, to come, if Peter had looked to the side to the other disciples who were with him in the boat and taken their hands and together they had walked out to Jesus, might they have just met him there? There's so much strength in numbers. But here's the other part of the rest of the story that we forget, is that Jesus did meet Peter where he was. And so when Peter yells out, Lord, save me, it's the same kind of saving, curing, healing that Jesus was doing with those who had gathered the 5,000 plus when he gave them bread. He meets Peter where he is, and he returns with him to the boat. And in this gospel version, all of them proclaim, truly, this is the anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah. I think they find it in their fear, in their heartache, and in their heartbreak, and in their beloved Peter slipping into the water. That's often how it is for us in our challenges, in our trials, in our difficulties. We experience this grace and this love and the compassion of God. So let's not be afraid. Let's be together in journeying to mountaintops and swimming in oceans. I know that for me, a big part of that ocean story is my dad's compassion and his understanding how important, similar to getting back on the horse, it would be important for me to get back into the water and maybe get some other directions, which I'm sure he gave to me because I swim in the ocean with much caution still, but lots of joy, but not alone. And if I'm far out, I try to make sure I'm never the furthest person out, but I also look for who might be ahead of me. As far as Long's Peak, 
I'm not going to hike it again. Maybe I'll go as far as the boulder field, but I've learned to have great respect for what happens above treeline and especially later in the day. We get to live and learn. We get to experiment and try. And in all of it, God is with us. God provides and God's guiding us. I hope you'll consider some of your stories and how you see and experience and know God in those. Invite others into your stories and together let's keep entering into our sacred story to remember that indeed Jesus is the Christ, the one who came to save us, to heal us, to let us know firsthand, front row, up close, the amazing grace of God and how deeply and dearly God loves us. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day.
trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith Please pray with me. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. We join in praying together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Singing 
May these words walk with you this week. Together we trust that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And may God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace to love, serve, and grow. Thanks be to God, and we will.